Welcome back people at our sci-fi vlog, today with a lost hero of science fiction literature. And I guess you have no idea who it is, like exactly no idea. It is Edward Page Mitchell. Who's that man? My gosh. Well, he wrote the first story, for example, about faster than light travel with the Tachy Pomp in 1874. Gosh. He wrote the first book about an invisible man 14 years before our beloved H.G. Wells with The Crystal Man. Hmm. He wrote the first book about a time travel machine, also before Mr. Wells, my gosh, with The Clock That Went Backwards in 1881. Pretty early this guy, but who is this? Oh. I shall tell you that this man also wrote the first book about Beeman. The word wasn't invented in that way, but he wrote a book uh, that was called The Man Without a Body. And principally, it shows the same example of what we call today Beeman. But it was in 1877, a bit more earlier than Star Trek, I guess. And it goes on and on and on. He invented the first book where people are getting freezed in a kind of cryostasis. He wrote the first book about artificial nutrition and he wrote the first book about artificial intelligence. The most favorite topic of everyone who'd likes to be in science fiction today and who'd likes to fit in and to blend in in these topics. So. The one with the artificial intelligence is interesting because it was called The Ablest Man in the World, written in 1879, so exactly a hundred years before I was born, I was thinking about this. Well, let's talk about this artificial intelligence story of Edward Page Mitchell that is called The Ablest Man in the World. With The Ablest Man in the World, he tells the story about Dr. Rapperschwill. Dr. Rapperschwill is actually a clockmaker. And he finds a boy, a very young boy, a few years ago, who has lost all his senses by birth. And he likes to help, in a way, help the boy, where he's transplanting um, a thinking machine, like a clockwork brain, within his head. So he changes up his real brain and changes it with a clockwork brain. And this is how Dr. Rapperschwill creates um, an artificial intelligence. And this guy is getting a very fine, famous, a very interesting person. He's later on called Baron Savage. Baron Savage is a highly known and very recognized person in high society. But let's look inside the story of the Crystal Man that you all know with the name The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. But Edward Page Mitchell wrote The Crystal Man 14 years earlier in 1881. And it tells a story about a professor in Freiburg who has a laboratory and he is working together with his student and his student is called Mr. Flack. Mr. Flack is a kind of a guinea pig for Mr. Professor <laughs> Froelker and the poor guy is part of his experiments. He makes experiments with discolorization and um, translucency of gadgets and people. And he likes to make people and things invisible. And one day it works. And he tries out the same thing with uh, discolorization of um, the skin, of pigments of the skin. And at last he uses Stephen Flagg, his student. And you know, there comes a day where it works. And first of all, Stephen Flagg gets translucent and then he gets totally invisible. Unfortunately, Professor Froelicker dies on that day and Mr. Stephen Flagg stays invisible. Yeah, shit happens. But within the story, I think one of the, of the most weirdest um, passages in the story is that Mr. Flagg likes to stay with his beloved girl, Pandora Bliss. And he lives invisible in their house. And she knows that he's invisible. He's kind of fine with that. Well, well, well I guess a lot of women would, would love to, to see their, their husband or a friend or boyfriend invisible. Well, I can and can totally imagine that. And she accepts him. 
and he stays there and the people people recognize him also in the house because things are moving like ghostly like like chairs and and and, and um, tables are moving and they know okay someone is there because it feels kind of someone is touching you from behind and there's no one there and these are interesting because same same kind of pictures and passages you'll find in H.G. Wells, The Invisible Man. And it, it's also very interesting that H.G. Wells never uh, told anybody that he got his influence or inspiration by Edward Page Mitchell. And to be honest, when, when you ask me, yeah, I think he's too proud to acknowledge that. It, it could be, in a way, that this kind of idea lies in the air at the time and someone had to write this story had to write this book but there are so much parallels between the invisible man and the crystal man that you can't tell me that Edward Page Mitchell so wasn't an inspiration for H.G. Wells and he doesn't know him so maybe someone of you has an idea of that or someone of you knows more about um, Page Mitchell but I think this is an interesting coincidence at last, I'd like to say that for me, Edward Page Mitchell is a hard science fiction writer, one of the, the first hard science fiction writer, because he often explains like mysterious things, strange things with a technological base. And but he was also fascinated by mystery and suspense. And he was a big fan of Edgar Allan Poe. This is why he always making fun with names. For example, you see it with the German names when he pronounces like Mr. Dummkopf or Mr. Furliker. Often in his stories, very well-known, very intelligent persons like professors and doctors have funny names. And I guess um, Edgar Allan Poe did the same in his stories. So you can see his influential of and love of mystery and um, wordplay also um, with, with Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, people, I would say, Oh, there's one thing I'd like to tell you. You can download all his stories at the internet um, under gutenberg.net.au. I will, I will put the link uh, downwards in the description because uh, for sure the, the, so the short stories are free of rights. So for me, every page Mitchell is just still groundbreaking because a lot of his topics, a lot of theories he put inside his short stories are still an interesting sujet to talk about in science fiction and they're still up to date. So I would really, really appreciate if you read some of his short, short stories. Uh, the best of all, read, read, read all, read all, read everything, because they're, they're not that long as obviously called short stories. Um, so so you, you, are, um, you can download them for free, as I told you, and I would love to hear your, your comments about it and your critics, so please let me know. And um, Bye-bye. Have a good time.